Hey friend, welcome back to the Sage Audio channel. Today we're going to be answering the question, what is mastering for cassette? Now, mastering for cassette is based off of a lot of different factors, especially the tape type that you end up choosing. So we'll be looking at the different tape types. We'll be looking at some of the duplication process and also some terms that are really important if you uh, do decide to duplicate your tapes yourself, such as bias, hysteresis, and saturation. So stick around for the full video. I think it's going to be helpful. But before we get into it, if you're an artist or an engineer and you have a mix that you need mastered, perhaps one that you're considering duplicating and putting onto cassettes, send it to us at sageaudio.com. All you got to do is set up a profile, upload the song, we'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample in return. So the first thing I want to discuss are three terms that are related heavily to the tape type that you're going to end up choosing. Um, that is, again, hysteresis, bias, and saturation. So hysteresis first is pretty much the memory of tape. So whenever you record something onto a tape, be it analog tape or a cassette tape or anything like that, there's essentially a memory um, that... Uh, basically stays on the tape. So if I was to record a signal and then try to re-record another signal, some of that past signal is going to stay on that tape due to this memory. Now this is caused by um, the non-linear fashion in which, um, you know, tape is affected by an electrical signal. So certain high pitch frequencies aren't going to have enough energy to displace other previously recorded frequencies. And uh, again, that's going to lead to a uh, part of the past signal on the tape. And this is going to affect any future recording that you have. So it's something that you got to take care of. And the, uh, the way to take care of this is with something called bias. So bias is a high energy, high frequency um, signal that gets added onto the tape prior to anything else being recorded to it. So what this does is essentially scramble all the magnetic frequencies that are lying dormant and causing any types of you know problems, especially with hysteresis. So bias, again, is the remedy for uh, hysteresis. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, kind of the opposite of that, and that is saturation. Now, instead of, you know, there being signals that are too weak, um, saturation has to do with when there is an, an incredibly strong signal, um, so strong, in fact, that the magnetic particles of the tape um, are pretty much all used, and there isn't any room for them to move or to, you know, be reformed within the magnetic field. And so what happens is that you have an input that's so strong it can't be matched by the output. It's no longer, you know, matched in a linear fashion. You don't have an equal input to output ratio. And what uh, in turn happens is the output starts to basically compress. The output, you know, compresses. It, uh, it don't, no longer matches the input in a regular way. And you have something called uh, harmonic generation and distortion. Now this can sound really pleasant. This can also sound really bad. It depends on the tape type again. It's also going to depend on the amount that you're using. Um, so a lot of factors to look into. So let's, uh, let's discuss that while we look into the different tape types. So there are three different tape types that you're going to need to know. That is tape type 1, 2, and 4. Now there is also a third tape type, but it never really got popular. So the odds are you're not going to put your music on this tape type, and you don't really need to worry about it. So I'm not going to get into it. But uh, tape type 1 is a ferric oxide tape, and it has certain characteristics that make it really warm. So there's an attenuated high end, and there's an accentuated low end. And it also has a pretty high point of saturation, meaning that you can drive it a bit before people start to notice distortion too much. And what this, uh, what this will do is kind of compress the signal nicely. It'll generate some harmonics that sound good. So tape type 1 is definitely a great option. It's inexpensive. Um, it's about a dollar to two dollars per cassette, and um, it's very popular. Popular. It'll work in just about any type of tape deck. So if you're looking for a, a tape that would work for just about any audience, um, this is the tape to go for. It also has that kind of analog warmth that a lot of people associate with cassettes. So it's a great option. But the only thing that you might want to do during the mastering process is maybe boost some of that high end. If you're having problems with, you know, playback or like a balanced frequency response with your, your signal, you might need to, again, yeah, kind of amplify that high end so that by the time it's transferred to the tape, um, it's not attenuated to the point where things sound unbalanced. Now, another thing to note about this tape type is that it kind of has a low um, signal to noise ratio, meaning it's kind of noisy. So the signal is going to be a little bit, need to be a little bit louder when you're 
putting it onto the tape. So that's tape type one. Uh, tape type two is also an oxide-based tape, um, but it has essentially the opposite frequency response. So it's very detailed in the high end, um, but it has kind of a truncated low end. So one thing that you might need to do if you do pick tape type two is, you know, attenuate some of the high end, maybe boost some of that low end, um, just to kind of, you know, keep things interesting and keep things balanced in the frequency response. Another thing that you might want to do is use something like an R-Base uh, plugin that generates low frequency harmonics. And uh, this is something that you might need to do in the master if, you know, you expect that a lot of your listeners won't have a high-end stereo system and you want to try to recreate some of the low, those low frequencies. This would be, you know, a good, a good option um, for a tape type number two. Um, it doesn't cost too, too much either. It's about $2 to $4 per cassette. So again, if you're in a band and you're looking to expand your merchandising a little bit, this is a, still a good option, but it might be better if you have a uh, music type that lends itself more to high frequencies and it needs to be more detailed. Um, another thing to note for this tape type is that it does distort easily, probably because it has those higher frequencies. So you probably don't want to distort it too much during the mastering process. Now, the last tape type there, that there is or that you might use is tape type 4, and this is called a metal tape. It doesn't use an oxide like the other tapes. It uses metal particles. Now, this is cool because you can create a really great signal. There is a fully balanced frequency response. There's no, you know, attenuation of the high end or the low end or anything like that. Also, you don't really have to worry about noise. You don't have to worry about distortion in the high frequency range. It essentially sounds like a digital master just on cassette. But the problem with this one is, is that it's expensive and that the bias required for it is kind of difficult for a lot of tape decks to reproduce. So um, unless you have a really nice tape deck or your fans have a really nice tape deck, the odds are you're not going to be able to play a Type 4 tape. Um, it's just not going to be able to happen. So it's kind of um, a price to, you know, a price barrier, I suppose, between your music and your fans if you do decide to use Tape Type 4. Again, it sounds the best. You can pretty much put what a normal digital master would be onto this tape, so you don't have to change too much about your master, but there is kind of difficulty for people to listen to it. So that's something to keep in mind. So these are Tape Types 1, 2, and 4. Uh, tape type 1 is probably the best option. Tape type 2 is great too. Tape type 4, probably not so much, but at least now you know um, which options you have, and you should definitely pick one prior to the mastering process. That way you know how you should end up mastering uh, your song for that specific cassette type. So the last thing that I want to talk about is the duplication process, and this is really where bias and hysteresis come into play. Again, hysteresis is the memory of tape from past recordings, and bias is the way to get rid of that. Um, if you're choosing tape type 1 and you're going to duplicate that, then essentially you need to use that bias type in order to get rid of the previous hysteresis. So um, it'll probably come up as, you know, bias tape type 1 or normal bias. These are most likely what it's going to be named. For tape type 2, it is going to be, you know, tape type 2 bias or high bias. And for metal, it's going to be tape type 4 or metal bias. Now, this is simple enough, but you got to make sure that you, you do this prior to recording your signal onto the tape, especially if you're using tapes that have already been used. Perhaps you found them like at a, you know, Goodwill or something, and you're trying to make the most of your money you definitely have to use bias before recording your signal onto these tapes. And you have to use the correct bias, otherwise it's not going to work. So, again, very important. You have to use the correct bias for the hysteresis for the, you know, the tape type. And um, if you don't use this, it's not going to sound too great. And uh, one more thing that I do want to talk about when it comes to duplication is what I think might be the best way to, to do it. And in most um, tape decks, you might notice that on the back there is a line in input. Um, now, a lot of people, when they make cassettes, what they'll do is have a master cassette and they'll have, you know, the cassette after that they're recording onto. Now, this is fine for a little bit, but what will start to happen over time is the the master cassette will start to shed some of its magnetic particles and uh, what will happen is you'll lose frequency response, you'll lose your overall level, 
You'll probably lose some of your dynamics, some of your stereo, stereo imaging. Essentially, whatever information was recorded onto that stereo field, once it starts to shed, you're going to lose a lot of that information, meaning that any duplication that you make based off of that master that's already been you know, degraded is also going to be degraded. So what you should do, in my opinion, is use the line input on the back and just record one tape at a time using your digital master as the source. So you're not using a master tape as the source, you're using your digital master. And this is because the digital master doesn't change, it doesn't degrade, and because of that you're going to have better sounding, you know, more consistent um, and uh, professional sounding cassette tapes. So again, don't duplicate it from tape to tape. Go for from the uh, the digital master to the tape, and this will make your cassettes sound a lot better. So just to recap, the first thing that you should do is pick the tape type. The second thing you should do is go to your mastering engineer, letting them know what tape type that you're choosing. And then the last thing that you should do is start the duplication process. So again, tape type 1 is great for warm sounds, tape type 2 is great for a brighter sound, and tape type 4 is perfect if you want something that sounds really close to a digital recording. Again, letting the mastering engineer know, and then starting the duplication process after that. If this is something that you're kind of curious about and you want to learn more about, definitely check out the description below. And also, again, if you're an artist or an engineer and you have a mix that you need mastered, maybe one that you're trying to put on cassette, just send it to us at sageaudio.com. All you got to do is create a little profile and upload your song. We'll master that song for you and send you a free sample in return. But thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share it with your friends. Also, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. There is a subscribe button below this video. Also, you can comment on the, uh, on the video in the comment section below if you have any questions or maybe you have a suggestion for a future video. And then lastly, again, if you're an artist or an engineer and you have a mix that you need mastered, just send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample in return. But thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video.